Hi, let's talk about the arteries that serve the nasal cavity. So with respect to our discussion, we'll look first at the arteries serving the nasal septum, and then we'll turn our attention to the arteries serving the lateral nasal wall. And what we'll see is that both of these walls are served by basically the same three arteries. So the arteries to keep in mind are going to be branches of the ophthalmic artery, superiorly, the maxillary artery posteriorly, and the facial artery anteriorly. So let's start with that ophthalmic artery. Ophthalmic artery, as you recall, is a branch of the internal carotid that moves anteriorly across the orbit, and it sends two branches through the medial wall of the orbit, and these are the posterior and anterior ethmoidal arteries. So here we can see the posterior ethmoidal artery and its continuation, and here is the anterior ethmoidal artery. So we can see how these ophthalmic arteries are serving the septum from the superior. Posteriorly, so we're going to move clockwise. Posteriorly, the sphenopalatine artery is going to serve the nasal septum through posterior septal branches. The sphenopalatine artery is a branch of the third part or the pterygopalatine part of the maxillary artery. So here we can see a posterior septal branch, and this is anastomosing with that posterior ophthalmic there. And it also continues on along the floor of the nasal cavity anteriorly. So there's our branches of the, the maxillary, or ultimately the, the sphenopalatine artery. And then anteriorly, we have uh, nasal septal branches, which come from the facial artery. So if you recall, the superior labial branch of the facial artery is a very robust branch, and it can send a branch up towards the nose. And that branch moving up towards the nose is the nasal septal artery, and we can see that moving that way. So um, what we can't see here is a potential branch from the greater palatine artery. We're not in the, uh, in the appropriate plane for that, but that greater palatine artery can also serve the, uh, the nasal cavity that way. But one thing to, to really bring your attention to is that we can see anastomoses between these arteries, especially in this area. So that's referred to as Kieselbach's area, and it is the most frequent source of epistaxis or nosebleeds uh, in the nasal cavity. Over 90% of the cases of epistaxis occur from Kieselbach's area. Uh, so these are what would be referred to as anterior bleeds, and they are less serious than a posterior bleed, which would be coming from the, the lateral wall from the sphenopalatine artery. But these anterior bleeds, if you think about what's going on here, uh, this is an area that is very susceptible to drying out through respiration through the nose, um, and when that mucosa becomes very dry, the vasculature there, you know, is is likely to uh, to microhemorrhage and to produce a, a nosebleed. So turning our attention to the posterior wall, I'm sorry, the the lateral wall, <laughs> we'll see that all of the same uh, players are involved here. So these are all going to be branches of the ophthalmic superiorly, the maxillary posteriorly, and the facial anteriorly. So let's see what we have. So coming from the ophthalmic, we're going to have our anterior 
ethmoidal artery supplying anterior lateral nasal branches. We're also going to have our posterior ethmoidal artery serving a posterior ethmoidal branch as well. From the maxillary artery, here is sphenopalatine artery coming through and then giving rise to these posterior lateral nasal arteries. So there is a nice robust one moving along there. That's great. And then there's another nice robust one moving along there. So it's in this area that uh, posterior nosebleeds tend to originate. And these, uh, while being the minority of cases, so only about one in 10 cases are posterior nosebleeds, they tend to be more serious because the maxillary artery, as one of the terminal branches of the external carotid artery, has quite a bit of pressure behind it. And this is a difficult area to get to, to apply pressure to. So, um, you know, if, if necessary, a balloon tipped catheter can be inserted and then pressure can be applied to where the, uh, the sphenopalatine artery and these posterior lateral nasal arteries are originating. And then finally, we have uh, a lateral nasal branch that can make its way in through the, uh, the nose. Um, and these are branches of the facial artery. So the, the lateral nasal branch is the branch immediately following the superior labial branch. So one branch up is the lateral nasal branch and some of those terminals can make their way into the nasal cavity. And so we have the, the same pattern from the same sources of arteries supplying the lateral wall as we did the nasal septum. Ophthalmic artery superiorly, maxillary artery, posteriorly, and facial artery anteriorly. Thank you very much for your time.